What if I told you that the sum of the angles of a triangle can be greater than 180 degrees? Or that parallel lines cannot exist? And furthermore, I can prove it. No, your geometry teachers have not been lying to you. They probably just didn't mention that there are other geometries out there besides what you've studied in class. In one sense, geometry is like a game. You start with certain rules, and if you change those rules, you'll change the game. This video will introduce you to an exciting new frontier in the world of geometry called non-Euclidean geometries. Most of the geometry students learn in school is called Euclidean geometry. Euclid developed his geometry around 300 BC, and we're still using it today. Euclid based his geometry on five axioms. These are statements which seem to be obviously true. They are used as the building blocks for the rest of the geometry because each theorem is proved using these axioms. The first axiom Euclid used is two points determine a line segment. The second axiom is a line segment can be extended infinitely. The third axiom is a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. The fourth axiom is all right angles are equal. And the fifth axiom is given a line and a point not on the line there is exactly one line containing that point parallel to the first line. As you can see, the first four axioms are very simple and intuitive. However, the fifth axiom is more complicated. People began to suspect that maybe it shouldn't be an axiom after all. For centuries, mathematicians tried to prove the fifth axiom by using the other four, but no one could do it. Then some revolutionary mathematicians assumed that the fifth axiom was false. Surprisingly, the geometry they developed did not have any contradictions. It was as consistent as Euclidean geometry. Their discoveries at first were rejected. However, as new areas in science were explored, these geometries turned out to be very useful in explaining strange phenomena in astronomy, general relativity, and quantum physics. There are two ways in which the fifth axiom can be false. In the first case, we assume there can be multiple lines passing through a point which are parallel to the first line. This assumption leads to hyperbolic geometry. In the second case, we assume that no parallel lines exist. This assumption leads to spherical geometry. Since we live on a sphere, let's take a closer look at how on a sphere there are no parallel lines. When you began in geometry, you started with points, lines, and planes. Let's see what is analogous to these on the sphere. Our plane is the surface of the sphere, Points on the sphere are the same as points on the plane. Lines, however, are a different story. On a plane, lines are straight. So if you were a bug on the surface of the sphere, what would appear straight to you? Let's travel along some circles and find out. The white circle is a large circle, which cuts the sphere in half. Traveling along, it appears as if we are moving in a straight line. We neither curve to the left nor to the right. The black circle is a smaller circle. Moving along it, it appears that we are curving off to the left. We can see then that only those circles which cut the sphere in half are like straight lines. Therefore, these will be our lines in spherical geometry. They are called great circles and they are the circles made when a plane cuts the sphere through the center. If we remove ourselves from the sphere and look at it, the great circles appear curved to us. That's because we are looking at them from three dimensions. It is natural for us to look at an object in three dimensions since we live in a three-dimensional world. Remember, however, that we are working on the surface of the sphere we can't fly away from it or burrow into it. We are working in two dimensions. If you live on a sphere, great circles feel straight. Now that we have our points and lines, let's look at some theorems. 
One of the first theorems you learned was two different lines intersect in at most one point. On the sphere, you can see that two great circles intersect in two points. These points are easily seen when we make the sphere transparent. Of course, I could draw many circles on the sphere which don't intersect. But remember, these are not great circles. Only great circles are equivalent to straight lines. Here are another pair of great circles. They also intersect in two points. Since we can't draw a pair of circles that don't intersect, we have shown that in this geometry, no two lines are parallel. Let's look at triangles on a sphere. Any line drawn from the North Pole to the equator creates a 90 degree angle. It is obvious then that the sum of the angles of this triangle are equal to more than 180 degrees. So far, we have looked at a few properties of spherical geometry. Let's review what we know. The number of lines through point P, which are parallel to L, in spherical geometry is zero. In Euclidean geometry, it is one. The number of points at which two lines intersect. In spherical geometry, it was two. In Euclidean geometry, it is zero or one. The sum of the angles of a triangle. In spherical geometry, it is greater than 180 degrees. In Euclidean geometry, it is equal to 180 degrees. Spherical geometry seems to contradict Euclidean geometry. So which geometry is the right one? They all are. We can pick the one that works best for our situation. For most purposes, Euclidean geometry is the best fit. Euclid's conclusions are the most intuitive to us. Since we are so small compared to the Earth, it appears as if we are living on a flat plane. Therefore, if you were building a house, of course, you'd use Euclidean geometry. However, if you were traveling from Minneapolis to Paris, you'd want to fly in the shortest path possible. In Euclidean geometry, this would be a straight line. But in spherical geometry, it is a great circle. Therefore, instead of flying straight east, you'd have to start flying northeast. Spherical and Euclidean geometry are just two of the many different geometries that mathematicians have developed. Each are different, and they all work. In the future, don't be too quick to assume that things are always as they appear.